Is it too late now to say sorry that this video is going up late? <laughs> I am so friggin' bad. Anyway, how's it going, guys? My name is Wonsy Burnett, and welcome to PPL Week 3 versus Shardy and his Bayern Munich. And basically, if you don't know what team I'm bringing, you go down in that description and you click that team analysis, because I'm not going to be talking much about the team that I'm bringing. I will give a quick overview, but that's about it. Anyway... The team that I'm bringing here, as you can see, is Volcanium, which is Scarf with four attacks, Banded Scyther with Defog, um, uh, Hariyama, what are you? Your Rocky Helmet with uh, four attacks, max HP. Uh, I'm bringing Anticipation, Lumberry, Stealth Rock, Thunder Wave, Power Whip, Leech Seed, Ferrothorn. Uh, I'm bringing Dragon Dance, Latia, uh, Latios with Steel Wing, and I'm bringing Assault Vest, Thunderous Theory. And the team he's bringing is Clefable, Lucario, P Mega Pidgeot, uh, Sneasel, Latias, and the Nidoqueen. Throwing a bit of a curveball here, because I was a bit unsure of whether he was going to be bringing the Rotom Wash, but looking at it, it really doesn't number to my team, so him not bringing it is actually really good for me, because now I can pretty much just get Volcanion in, and if Volcanion, uh, if Latias somehow goes down, then Scarf Volcanion cleans up, because Scarf Volcanion outspeeds everything there, barring Scarfers, but I don't think he's going to have a Scarf up. Anyway, Whew, this is a damn hard matchup for us because, as you can see, he has that damn Mega Pidgeot, he has that damn Sneasel. I pretty much predicted his team right, except for possibly the addition of Clefable and, and Lucario. Lucario is obviously going to be a massive problem here, but I feel like with this matchup, he's probably going to be leading with the Nidoqueen because he can see this and see that I'm f I have three Pokemon that really don't like Stealth Rock. So, we decided, well, I decided. <laughs> that it would probably be a good idea to try and predict that and lead off with my Volcanion, which can outspeed and bop it with a Steam Eruption. So, I'm going to predict that Nidoqueen to, to to lead off, and yeah, that's that's the thing. So, anyway, let's get into the match and see what happened when Birmingham Spritzy decided to be absolute banterous legends and tried to challenge Shardy and his Bayern Munich. Damn it. So Stella is issuing a challenge, Stella the fella, and Stella decides to lead off with that damn Nido Queen. So I predicted that correctly, and I decided to lead off with my Volcanion because Volcanion is an absolute truck. But he's going to see that steam eruption coming from a mile away because I don't think he's running the uh, speed investment, and he's going to switch out into the Latias. Now, on turn one, I didn't want to make a play and try and predict the switch out. I just went straight for the safe uh, steam eruption. Let's just turn our sound down. I went straight for the safe uh, steam eruption, and it's going to do pittance to that Latias. Now, from that damage, I can see that's a specially defensive Latias. It's either... Well, it has to be specially defensive. So... At this point, I go out into my Ferrothorn, because I know that the Anticipation is probably going to reveal the Hidden Path Fire here. It does, but I know that I can take two, because it's got to be specially defensive, and it's not going to have much special attack investment. So, as you can see, it does less than half. I get three Stealth Rocks up here, and yeah. So, he's going to withdraw the Latias here, because he doesn't really have a good matchup there. He doesn't really want to get Thunder Wave or something, so I'm going to go straight for that Thunder Wave. But he's going to go straight back out to the Nido Queen, which is promptly going to get its rocks up, which is awful for me because I have one Defogger and it's a Scyther. So I'm going to go straight for my Stealth Rocks back, not to waste the turn, so that I can at least put some offensive pressure on him as well. And he's going to go for the Ice Beam here, which I honestly predicted him to predict my switch out and go for, like, I don't know. I expected him to switch out to predict it, but I'm going to go for the seeds, get some leech seed off, you know, get some residual damage on a, a Nido Queen that doesn't look to be Black Sludge. And that's very good. So that Ice Beam's pretty much been null nullified, whatever you want to call it. And he's going to stay in and go for Ice Beam again, which is kind of revealing to me that he doesn't have the Flamethrower. But as you can see, he is Black Sludge. But I went for the Thunder Wave there, predicting him to switch out again to get rid of them, uh, the leech seed but he didn't, and I'm just getting casually more and more damage off on it. Now, I think at this point I realised that I don't really want to go for a Power Whip in case he goes for uh, into Latias and I do nothing, so I decided to switch out into my Insurance here and go into uh, Hariyama, which is physically... It's, it's pretty much bulky and it can take pretty much anything, and that Ice Beam, Thick Fat Resisted, does nothing. So, I'm still getting the Leech Seed recovery here. And that's going to be very nice on a Harry Armor who doesn't have leftovers. So I pretty much win this matchup. And I'm, think I'm figuring he's not going to want to keep the Nido Queen in. But he just stays in and goes for Earth Power. So I go for a Heavy Slam thinking he's going to go out into Clefable.
but he doesn't, and that heavy slam does just over half. Well, it puts it at, it's just in range of a two-hit KO. So I'm here just like, why are you not switching out? W will you please switch out? I don't want to have to keep taking moves from you. But at this point, I figure, well, this Nido Queen's pretty much dead anyway. I might as well make the first blow and kill it with an Ice Punch. So I stay and take this Earth Power and just bop it with Ice Punch. And that is the Nido Queen down, which means that Thunder Asterion does have free reign to Vault Switch around here. But it's unfortunate because I don't want to be doing that now because he's got the Stealth Rocks up. So he goes out into the Latias. And I figure, you know what, there's not even any point in me keeping Karyama around now. I might as well let it go because Sneasel's just going to two-hit KO it with anything. And I let parking go down, which is really annoying because that Latias just kills out Hariyama and now I still have no switch into Sneasel, which is fucking horrible. But I go into Saltator here because I'm figuring, right, I can outspeed this thing, hopefully, and I can kill it with Dragon Claw. So he's going to switch out here, predicting the Dragon Claw because he told me during the game, you're going to bring the set, aren't you? And this here, his reaction to this reveals to me... But yeah, he predicted me to bring that Dragon Dance Lat Megalatia, uh, uh, Megalatios, because that's unaware of Fable. And he switches it in, and the Dragon Claw does nothing because it's a, it's a fairy. And suddenly I'm faced with a massive problem. This is a Clefable that takes, like, no damage from a Steel Wing if it's physically defensive, which I predict him to be. And I have no idea what to do. So I go out into Undor. Pretty much just sacking it off. Anticipation does reveal that it has the Fire Blast and it goes for a Thunder Wave. So I'm here just like... No! This is not going how I had it planned. But my my Lumberry does cure the, the Thunder Wave which is absolutely useless because it's slow as balls anyway and it's not going to help me at all. And he goes for Fire Blast which does hit. And that's going to be a dead Ferrothorn because... Ferrothorn is, you know, four times weak to fire. Now, Ferrothorn got its rocks up. It set up a Leech Seed. It, you did something, I guess. But this Clefable's just sat here on full health. Like, yeah, okay. So I'll go out into Larson. And at this point, I'm like, okay. He's not going to stay in thinking that I'm going to go for a, a, a Sludge Wave or something. He doesn't know what set I am yet. So he switches out and goes back out into the, the Latias. Which is going to take Stealth Rock damage, which is very nice. I obviously go for a Sludge Wave because I'm predicting to stay in, which is not nice at all. So, uh, it does nothing, and now I'm faced with a Latias who doesn't look to be speedy. So I decide, you know what, right, I'm going to pause this right here, because we're going to go for that Dark Pulse. And the reason I went for that Dark Pulse is because, quite frankly, I didn't know what set this thing was. I knew it had Psychic, I knew that it was specially defensive, but I didn't know what moves it had. So, I decided that I knew that if I could get rid of that thing, then Volcanion pretty much sweeps from here. So I had to go for the Dark Pulse just to see how bulky this thing actually was, whether it had speed or not, and whether or not it had anything that wanted to try and take me out. So I go for the Dark Pulse, and as you can see, it's going to hit, and it gets a crit. But not only does it get a crit, it flinches him. So we get a crit flinch, and that is incredibly unfortunate. And the reason why that is such an important moment in the match is because that crit flinch stopped him from going for Roost with his Latias. And if you go for a Roost on that Latias there, you keep it at full health. You, well, not full health, but you keep it at a very high amount of health. And you keep it with the ability to wall and kill this Thunderous. It stops Volcanion. And this was such a huge turning point in the match because that Crit Flinch has allowed me to be able to take out that Latias. It takes... Thunderous now kills it with a Volt Switch from that range, which is absolutely incredible. It allows me to really put the pressure on because now he has nothing that stops Volcanion from sweeping. Also, I thought. <laughs> well, we'll get, to, we'll get to the Volcanion stuff later. Anyway, basically, as you can see, he's not going to be able to move. He's going to get a bit of leftovers back, and I'm going to go for a Volt Switch this turn as he decides the best course, of, uh, best course of action is to stay in and roost and let it die. So that Latias is down, and like I said, Volcanion now has a clear run at this team. Steam Eruption and Fire Blast kill the team, like straight up killer. But I go out into Dugarry knowing this. I go out into it knowing this. So I take a bit of Stealth Rock damage, and he goes out to fail, which I completely forgot was even alive. Like, ridiculous. So I decide, you know what? I'm not going to let that Clefable do things and stuff against me. I'm going to switch out into Mega Latias, predicting a Thunderbolt, because I thought if he had Thunderbolt, that would be pretty much the only reason. But he goes straight for a Moonblast instead. 
Oh, Megalati House, you're so annoying. So, he's going to get leftovers back, and that's going to leave me at like 13. That, that, that's stealth rock range. There's no point me doing anything else. So I stay in, go for a steel wing, and this is an important moment. Because I know that Latias is a bit of an annoyance. And I managed to crit flinch it, which took it out. But this is actually surprisingly important. So I go for the steel wing and miss. And the reason why that is so important... Also, I'm just going to just have to look at things because I haven't muted channels. But the reason why that is so important is because... Excuse me, Eric, can you not? Let's pause it. The reason why that's so important is because... Uh, that's a Steel Wing against a Clefable. That's a max attack Steel Wing against a Clefable. And that's very, very frustrating because it, I need damage off on this thing. I know that Steam Eruption and Fire Blast from Volcanion are not two hit KOs if he has. They're not two hit KOs if he has much Sped uh, F investment. And I don't think he does. But even about 80 EVs is enough to avoid the, the two hit KO from Fire Blast from this range. So. That has meant that now he can pretty much take on Volcanion with the Clefable because I can't two-hit KO it now, which is very, very annoying. But anyway, let's keep going and see what happens. So he's going to get his leftovers back, and it's going to keep him at a very high amount of health. <sighs> pretty much full. So I got into a Weezer, and I predict him to get scared out here. And I predict him to get scared out, and I go straight for the Defog because I can't keep pressure up with stealth rocks on my side of the field i go for the defog and this actually opens up the game so much you thunder wave scyther but scyther does not care does not care in the slightest and i decide that pretty much scyther's only job now is going to be fodder so we've allowed ourselves to keep pivoting around with thunderous and i predicted him to actually take me out there and i stay in and go for a defog but he switches out and goes out into the mega pidgeot giving it a free setup and i go straight for a defog now that is not fun because now i've given him the chance to stay in and set up if he has it so i, I decide you know what i don't care i'm going straight out into thunderous i can take on this mega burb and i can pretty much just do things and stuff so he mega evolves and he goes for the hurricane as you're gonna see but I'm specifically EV'd to counter Mega Pidgeot with this Thunderous. And that does nothing. So he's going to stay in now. And this was an important decision for him. Because I predicted him to switch out. And I assumed that Volt Switch would be able to one-shot this Mega Pidgeot. And looking at the Calc, it's a very high roll. A very high roll to take it out. So he had two choices. He either switches out or stays in and gets damage on this thing. And hopes that I can't kill it. Because if I don't kill it... In his mind, if I don't kill it from here, he wins. Because he outspeeds me and everything else is revengeable with Hurricane. So, at this point, he's made a very, very, very clever play. And he's actually stayed in and gone for damage. So, what's going to happen here is he's going to get the Heat Wave damage off. If he crits me, he wins. He doesn't crit. I'll go for the Volt Switch. If he lives, in his mind, he wins. He lives. And I assume that at that point, he wins. So... I tried, what I did there was, and you're not going to see it, but what I actually did there was I actually waited about 50 seconds before switching in Volcanion because I wanted to bluff the illusion that I was trying to think of what I actually can do. I was trying to bluff the illusion that he wins from there. And the, the way that I did that was I waited to, to try and give the illusion that I was frantically looking through my Pokemon to see a, a way that I could try and switch in and actually take out this Mega Pidgeot. So now I've gone into Volcanion and I assume he thinks that... He, um, he can outspeed me, but I'm scarfed. I go for Fire Blast, which is going to take out that Pidgeot at that range, and Mega Pidgeot does not get a kill against me, which is amazing. But now he's going to go into that pesky Clefable, and this is another annoying point in the match. So, this is another 50 50 play. What we're going to see is he has two choices. If he goes for Moon, if he goes for Thunder Wave here, and I stay in and go for Fire Blast, he wins. But if he goes for from, uh, if he goes for Moonblast and I switch out, he also wins. The only way I can win here is if I correctly predict a, a couple of plays and pull myself into a position where Scarf Volcanion is up against the rest of his team. I cannot give him opportunity to get any free hits in. I need to make the next series of plays immaculately in order to have any chance of winning. And that means that I need to kill Lucario and leave it for a two versus two 
with my, my Thunderous and my Volcanion versus his Clefable and his Sneasel because I outspeed the Sneasel, I can kill it with Fire Blast, and I can live Ice Shards with Volcanion. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to predict him to go for the Thunder Wave, and I'm going to switch out here into my Thunderous Therium. So, I'm going to go in, and what happens here? I actually go into Uisa. <laughs> but I was just sacking it off as fodder anyway. And he's going to go for Fire Blast next turn and kill it. But it's still the same principle that works here. So, he kills off Scyther finally with a crit. <laughs> crit that didn't matter. But that does give me initiative to go out into Larson. And this is another one of those plays because... <sighs> this is where the match gets very intense because... He's left with Fable, Lucario, and Sneasel, and I'm left with Thunderous Therian and Volcanion. So, what's left is, if he goes for Moonblast here, as I go for Sludge Wave, I win. Because if I get damage on this Clefable, if I hit it with a Sludge Wave, I win. Because I outspeed everything with Volcanion, and a combination of Extreme Speed and Ice Shard will not kill Volcanion from the range it's at. So, I have to predict the switch out here. I have to predict him to switch out and go into Lucario trying to predict my sludge wave. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go and we're going to see what he does. So he go he switches out and goes into the Lucario. And what we did, what we did was we predicted this and went for a vault switch. So that was one of the pl of the the moves I needed to make made correctly. And that pops a, a, an air balloon funnily enough. I, I assume that was for um, Earthquake Mega Latios, but what we're going to do, we're going to switch into Volcano, and that allows us to outspeed this thing and kill it with a Fire Blast. But he goes for Extreme Speed for a bit of chip damage, and the Fire Blast now is going to kill that, Vol that uh, Lucario, and that's brilliant, because now we're left with the 2 on 2 situation that we wanted. That's for Fable and... Sneasel versus Thunderous Theory and Volcanion. So he's going to go back out into the Clefable. And now we need another series of plays. At this point, I am under the impression that this is 252 HP, 252 defense bold to counter Mega Latios. So I calced it, and Fire Blast is a two hit KO on this Clefable. So if I can predict his next move and get some damage off with my Thunderous. Or at least hit it with a fire blast as he goes for a moon blast. I win. This is an incredibly tense match that's incredibly tense at the end because we need to make plays. So he went for Thunder Wave last time. I'm not sure Shardy is the same is the ballsy enough man to go for it again. So we're gonna predict him to go for moon blast and we're gonna stay in and we're gonna go for a fire blast. So we go for the fire blast and miss. And what you're gonna see now is gonna go for moon blast. So we predicted correctly, and we missed the Fire Blast. Now, you can say that that's payback for the, the Crit Flinch, which I would be, I think is fair in saying. I think that's very fair in saying. So, basically, he's going to get the Moon Blast damage off, and this is huge, because two Moon Blasts puts us in range of a Sneeze or Ice Shard. And now we're left in a situation again. Do we hit the Fire Blast, or do we? We switch in predicting the Thunder Wave. Because if he Thunder Waves now and I switch into Thunder Asterion, I win. But if if I go for Fire Blast and he Thunder Waves Volcanion. No, if I go for Fire yeah, if I go for Fire Blast and he Thunder Waves Volcanion, he wins. So I assumed that he was actually gonna stay oh god. I assumed that he was actually gonna stay in and go for a moon blast, predicting me to predict the Thunder Wave, which it's really complicated when you when you think about it, but I predicted him to make the play, and I stay in like a man and go for another Fire Blast, and miss again. So, as you can see, he went for Moon Blast again, which means that my prediction was spot on. I've made three plays in this match that have been spot on, and I've messed up because of hacks on two of them. And the frustrating thing is, those two Fire Blasts would have killed a Clefable that's max HP, max defense. They would have two hit KO'd it. And I only needed one to hit, to be honest. Because if one of them hits, then I can kill it with Sludge Wave. And depending on what Sneasel... Well, to be fair, Sneasel kills me. But I needed those two Fire Blasts to really hit. I really needed them to hit, and they didn't. And that has really cost me. So, as you can see, he's going to go for a Moon Blast again. So we predicted correctly again, and it does about 29 damage. And we're going to go for a third Fire Blast, and finally hit... 
Uh, it's a bit too late now. Uh, but we're gonna go. He's gonna go for Moonblast, and he's gonna take out Volcanion, and that's annoying because we could have taken out that Clefable, and we're left with a situation where we have a Thunderous Therian that's pretty much facing a Sneasel and a Clefable. So we're gonna go out to Thunderous Therian. We're gonna hopefully kill this thing with a Sludge Wave, and it's gonna be a one -oh. So we go for the Sludge Wave. It doesn't even kill. So, this thing is just going to take us out. And that's five kills for Cafable. And that's pretty much going to be the win for Shardy. And that's so, so unsatisfying. But we there was no salt between us. We genuinely enjoyed the match. And we were very friendly about it afterwards. We both apologized for the hacks on both sides. Because I can honestly say this is one game where hacks improved the battle. I never thought I'd ever say that. But hacks actually improved this one. If I'd have won because of the crit flinch on Latias, I would have felt incredibly bad about it. But because the hacks want then changed the game again and won it for Shardy, I don't feel as bad about that crit flinch because it evened itself out. We missed a steel wing, we missed uh, two fire blasts in a row, and uh, it's frustrating. But one thing I will say, that steel wing miss, while it may not seem that much now, it actually, if the game played out the re the way it did, the rest of the match exactly the same, and we still missed that, and, and we hit that steel wing, we killed Clefable with, I think it was, I don't know if it would have 2 hit KO'd, but we would have killed the Clefable, and it would have been dubious whether Volcanion would have still been alive, and it basically would have just left it in range for Thunder Asterion to kill it. So that steel wing damage would have at least changed it to a 1-0. But those fire blast misses were huge because if we hit both of those we face a sneasel that we outspeed at 50 hp a banded ice shard does nowhere near 50 hp so we win that match if we don't miss a fire blast but that's 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 just the way pokemon goes it was an incredible game that was actually probably fair with the way the hacks was distributed we got a crit flinch and we got two fire blasts and a steel wing miss in return. So I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here, but that's going to be the game. If you want to see more of Shardy stuff and see how he's doing with the Bayern Munich and the PPL, go down in, in the description below, click his links and go and watch his side of the battle. It's an incredible, incredible match and I really, really am. Uh, Shardy's one of the few people in this league that I can genuinely say that I used to watch before I, I started the league. And I remember genuinely looking at him and thinking, you know what? He's really fucking good at Mons. So, yeah. On analysis, on in hindsight, probably should have played better around the Nido Queen at the start. Probably should have tried harder to keep the rocks off the field. But my end game plays didn't justify the hacks taking it all away from us. But I'm not complaining because the hacks was even. We had a massive piece of hacks on our side, and we got evened out in the end. So I'm I'm satisfied with the loss because it wasn't a huge loss. The hacks didn't alter the game in a way that made it unfair, but it did alter the game and made it more exciting. So that's how hacks can be good in a Pokemon game. But yeah, thank you for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next week. So, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great life. And I will see you later. Take care of yourselves.